Hello, and welcome to Unity Church on the Mountain from my home. Today is Mother's Day, and the title of the talk will be Mother's Love. But let's begin by affirming together our opening statement. There is only one presence and one power in my life and the universe. God. Let's just take a moment and breathe. A nice deep breath in and hold it for a short time and release it. And again. And we relax into this moment. Secure that all is in divine order that we are exactly where we're meant to be right now. And let's affirm together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to do something a little different. Before I begin the actual talk portion, I'd like us to go together a little deeper in prayer and reach out and, and bless all of the mothers in this world, all of the caregivers in our lives. Whether that was our true birth mother or our true mother who, who raised us up and who always was there to lift us up and kiss that small cut on the knee. This is a prayer that was uh, sent to me in email and I just loved it so much I had to share. It's originally written by a Unity minister named Martha Creek. So on this Mother's Day, please join me to confer, to give blessings and send energy and good vibes through our hearts to the heart of humanity, to all mothers and beyond. I'm going to affirm a line and then there'll be a passage where it says we, like the first line is we celebrate you. And I invite you, if you feel in your heart what it is that I'm speaking, that you speak aloud and repeat with me the we celebrate you part. And so I'll say that twice. One time to bring it into your consciousness and the next time so that we can say it together. So let us take another deep breath and go to that place of prayer as we share this blessing to all the mothers and beyond. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. We celebrate with you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn with you. We mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. We mourn with you. 
to those who walk the hard path of infertility fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment. We walk with you. We walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. We need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with their children, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. We sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. We grieve with you. To those who experience abuse at the hands of our own of your own mother we acknowledge your experience we acknowledge your experience to those who live through driving tests medical tests and the overall testing of motherhood we are better for having you in our midst we are better for having you in our midst To those who are single and long to be married and mothering their own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you long for it to be. We mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. We walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. We grieve with you. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and rejoice with you. We grieve and rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. We commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. We anticipate with you. To those who wanted kids and weren't able to, and to those who didn't want kids and had them, we walk with you. We walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart. And we have real warriors in our midst. We remember you. We remember you. We can commend mothering for the ways it reflects the image of God by bringing forth new life nurturing those on her path and living with the tension of providing both freedom and a safety net. We thank you. We thank you. And so it is. Amen. <sighs> I'd like to share a joke with you this morning. The child asked their mother, Mother, why are computers so smart? And the mother thought about it for just a few seconds and then answered, because they listen to their motherboards. Okay. Well, how about this one? It's a little Johnny joke. So little Johnny was in Sunday school. 
And his Sunday school <clears throat> teacher asked him, Little Johnny, do you pray before you eat your meal? And little Johnny answered, Why, no, my mother's a good cook. So now let's, let's talk a bit about this mother's love. Mother's love is something that happens on many levels, and I'd like to speak to it on, on two. We, we've already spoken a mother's blessing. To bless those real-life caregivers, the ones who we know have seen, touched, and been with in our life. And we've sent a blessing to these caregivers who are, have been, and will be caregivers. But now let's look inwardly. Let's look at the mother's love that is within us. And I'd like to share scripture for you from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 1. This is when Mary has already been visited by the angel and informed that she will give birth to Jesus. And so she travels to spend some time with her cousin, Elizabeth, who she knows is also with child. And while she's there, she says these words. And this is the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, and I'll be reading verse 46 from the Lamsa translation from the, the ancient Aramaic scrolls. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My soul magnifies the Lord. It's a really short sentence, but it's so packed. Let's begin to unpack this a little bit. She says, my soul. Now let's, let's think about what Mary herself means when we look inwardly. Who is Mary inside of you? Whether your outward body is male or female, we all have within us this Mary. So who could that be? Mary is a symbol of the feminine within us, the nurturing, caring, compassionate person, the mother that is already here inside us and is expressed through us into this world. Whether your body is male gendered or female gendered, we all have this within us, this Mary. And Mary says, my soul, my soul, that I am within me, the highest part of me, magnifies the Lord. This divine feminine part of us magnifies. It, it can see closer and it can make bigger, make greater. Isn't that what magnifying means? To, to take something small and make it big? My soul, the divine feminine that's within us all, magnifies the Lord. And the Lord is God's presence within us. The divine feminine within me and within you makes greater, magnifies the divine presence that is within us all. The, the male that is part of us is good for certain things. That male part of us, 
Again, whether we're of a female body or a male body, it makes no difference. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about within each and every one of us. That male part of us is good at analyzing and comparing and recording facts and spitting them back out. But if you want truly to bring forth something new, something, the creativity that is within us, the, the intuitive knowing, then we go to the feminine part of ourselves. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Pure in heart. Those who are able to go to that part of themselves where that divine feminine is ready to burst forth and leave aside that thinking and analyzing part of self And come purely with this vision of the heart. We are then ready to experience, to know God. My soul magnifies the Lord. It is from this place that we have the divine experience of knowing God. And when we are in this place, that is our highest vibrating self, the I within the I, the great I am, we radiate that light into the world we don't even have to try. It happens. It just happens. And when we're in the presence of someone who is in this place, we, we can feed off of that. And we begin to vibrate at this same higher energy level, this finer more subtle energy level, and we begin to go into the same presence of heart and begin to vibrate it and radiate it out into the world. We begin to share in this same experience of being in the presence of God. My soul magnifies the Lord. So on this Mother's Day, let's remember how Mother's Day started. Mother's Day did not start by Hallmark Company as an excuse to sell cards for another day. And it's not even about remembering our own mother. At the end of the Civil War in America, there was a great crying out of mothers who had lost children in a war that killed so many people. And there was a cry out for this killing to end. And one of those mothers who lost was Julia Ward Howe. And she had a longing to start a revolution, a revolution of peace. And she found a day, Mother's Day, to bring about this revolution of love. Where we're mothering all people. 
from each one of us with that divine center within us, we reach out in love to everybody in this world and share the peace of God, that unconditional love, and it radiates out and it touches everyone. And that is the spirit of Mother's Day. So yes, we bless every mother, every caregiver in this world today. But we go beyond that. And we, we, we express and we take part in this revolution of love and peace. And we mother, yes the verb, we mother every person in this world without exception. And we share that love and that peace that comes through us in abundance supply from the divine source itself and we share that today as a symbol of sharing that same love every day of our life. So outwardly we bless all of the caregivers in our lives who have ever touched us or those we love. And inwardly, we reach through the soul, the divine feminine within us, and we magnify the Lord in this world. We magnify and radiate the great I Am, the Christ presence within us, and we share this mothering with the entire world. And so that is my invitation to you on this Sunday, this Mother's Day, and going forward in your life to reach within to that divine feminine that we all share and magnify the I Am, the Lord, in this world. My prayer is that this has touched you in some way and that you've found some speck of truth that you can take from this, these words and put to use in your life. And I invite you this morning or this afternoon or whenever it is that you're listening to these words that if you are moved and feel within your heart that you can freely give then go to unitychurchonthemountain.org. Scroll down and in the bottom left side of the page, you'll see a yellow button that says donate. And please, if only if you can freely give, we are ready to receive so that you may give. Let us now close by affirming together our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love. The power of God protects us. I am the power. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Thank you so much. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>